Hey guys, welcome to another video with The Financial Controller. My name is Bill Hanna, and in today's video, I'm gonna walk you through five financial analyst job interview questions that are behavioral. And what I mean by behavioral questions is that these are the questions that the hiring manager would ask you to gauge your uh, willingness and readiness to work within a team, uh, work well under pressure, uh, navigate social situations at work, and resolve conflict. And if you've been following this channel, you'd know that I spent the last 15 years working in finance and that I sat at both sides of the table, both as the job seeker and also as the hiring manager. And in this video, I wanna give you the things and the signals that I look for when I have a candidate for a financial analyst role, the things that when I hear as far as these behavioral questions uh, immediately clicks and I realize that this is somebody who's ready to work in this job. So let's go through these behavioral questions. Again, these are five questions. We'll go through each of these questions and the answers one by one. So let's dive right in. All right, guys, so question number one, the question goes, what is the biggest mistake you've made in your job? What the interviewer is gauging by this question is your willingness to admit to a mistake that you've made. Because basically we're all humans. And if you're not willing to admit to a mistake, this will give a bad signal to the interviewer. So what I want you to do before the interview is to think of an example of a mistake and just remember this example so that you can say it during the interview. Because if you start saying that you uh, didn't make any mistakes and you, or you can't remember a mistake, this might give a bad signal to the interviewer that you're not someone who's willing to admit to a mistake because at the end of the day, you would wanna work with someone who's willing to actually say that they made a mistake rather than hiding their tracks uh, and not admitting to the mistake. So this is what the interviewer is trying to do and your chance here is an opportunity. So rather than this being a challenge or a curveball for you, this should be an opportunity for you to mention a, a mistake and then mention how you were able to correct it and uh, even avoid it in the future. So the example I'm gonna share with you is actually a mistake that I've done early on in my career. And this kind of mistake is the kind of thing that I would say as an answer to this kind of question. And basically what happened is that early on in my career, I was in charge of creating a financial model that was part of a presentation that was then given to an investor. And basically on the morning of the presentation, I've discovered that one of my Excel files had an error in it that was producing the wrong number because I was linking uh, to a cell rather than using an actual formula like a VLOOKUP formula. I was linking to a cell and I shouldn't have done that, but basically I discovered the mistake, so I alerted my manager. And even though it wasn't pleasant, it wasn't great, but the manager was able to then avoid uh, the mistake with the investor and corrected the number last minute. And then what I learned from it is that instead of linking to a cell, I discovered that if I use a VLOOKUP or an index match formula in the Excel file, I would avoid this kind of situation. So basically what I learned from my mistake is that I'm using now a VLOOKUP or an index match instead of linking to a cell in a different tab in the file. So you see what I've done here? I basically was able to admit to a mistake, which is what the hiring manager wants. He wants to hear somebody who's willing to admit to a mistake. And I highlighted what I've done to remedy my mistake is that I rushed to my manager and let them know of the mistake. And then on top of that, what I learned from this, and that's why I write here the word opportunity, because this is an opportunity for you uh, to shine and to show that you've learned from your mistake and you've done other things to avoid falling in the same mistake in the future. So this will be the first question that comes to mind when it comes to behavioral questions. All right, so question number two, and the question goes, describe a situation when you were under pressure. And basically what the hiring manager is doing here is that not only they're gauging that you could work under pressure, is that you would thrive under pressure. And to me, the idea of thriving under pressure uh, has to do with staying focused. And staying focused when you work under pressure has to do with being organized and using checklists and creating milestones if you're managing a bigger project and also relying on other team members to work toward a bigger goal. So let me give you an example of the kind of answer that I would give to this kind of question. Because basically for me, one of the things that I have to do each year is deliver the financial statements to the board of directors at the end of the audit engagement. And it's usually a big project of compiling all of the financial information, going through the audit, and then coming out with a financial package that I would then deliver to the board of directors. And this for me requires a lot of focus and there's a lot of pressure 
uh, of meeting a deadline. And so the way to stay focused for me is to create a checklist of all of the things that need to happen uh, to get to the final destination of having the financial package. And then I manage that by team member and work with each team member to accomplish their own uh, deadline to finish their piece of the project and then bring everything together at the end. So basically the way for me to stay focused is to create uh, checklists uh, to stay organized on uh, milestones of things that need to happen for me to get to the final goal and then manage each team member's deadline to get to the final deadline of uh, delivering the financial statements. So this would be the kind of answer that I'll be given to this kind of question. So you need to think uh, for yourself what, what will be the answer for yourself. So come up with an example before the interview. Uh, don't come up with it on the fly during the interview. So come up with it before uh, and then so you can be ready during the interview. And this would be question number two. All right, so question number three, and the question goes, describe a situation when you had a tight deadline. And what the interviewer is gauging here is your willingness to go above and beyond to uh, meet a certain deadline. And this usually entails a few different things. Uh, so usually that entails working overtime or putting in more time to get the work done. So they, they're trying to gauge your potential there, as well as being organized uh, mentioning things like a schedule or a checklist would help and also your willingness to work within a team because most often when you have a deadline at work or a tight deadline you're working within a team that is trying to accomplish and meet the same deadline and so these are the things that the interviewer would typically be looking for so to give you an example of the kind of answer that I'll be giving to this kind of question, and in my answer, I try to incorporate all of the aspects. So I'm gonna incorporate being a team player and being organized and working overtime is an example of fundraising for any of the companies that I worked for. Because basically whenever there's a fundraising, there is usually a very tight deadline with the external investors, but also there is an internal deadline uh, we're usually way ahead of the external deadline so that we can get the work done and review it before we can uh, submit it to outside investors. So basically, uh, to meet the deadline, we usually divide the task among ourselves with the team. So e each team member would get a set of tasks uh, to accomplish so that we can work toward the bigger goal. And basically, we had to create a checklist of the things that need to happen for each team member to get the work done and create milestones. And basically, when we create checklists on milestones, we're able to organize all of the things that need to happen for the bigger project to get accomplished. And so you see in my example, I stress you know, working within a team and creating a checklists some milestones to be organized. And these are the things you need to be uh, talking about so that you can give signals to the hiring manager that you're someone that they can rely on to meet uh, deadlines in the future. If you or anyone you know is preparing for a job interview in accounting, be sure to download my accounting interview checklist. It's 100% free and an amazing summary of the most common accounting interview questions. I'll leave a link in the description below. All right, so question number four, and the question goes, what motivates you at work? And if we have to be honest here for a minute, is that what motivates anyone to do any kind of work is usually money. But in the interview, it will be highly inappropriate for you to talk about money. So instead, for me, what I would talk about is the things that will lead to making more money. So instead of talking about the actual money, you can talk about the things like learning and growth. And so what motivates me is to learn and to grow in my career because I know that the more I learn, the more I will earn. So learning and growth motivates me uh, to work more and to get exposed to new things. The other thing is creating a reputation or a personal brand because we've all seen these uh, folks on LinkedIn who have like a testimonial from a colleague or a former boss basically uh, praising them for being highly efficient, highly organized and all of these good things. And we all secretly wish that we, we are one of those people who have this kind of testimonials. So basically this is something that pushes me to work uh, harder and make me want to do more is to create a personal brand and a reputation and also learning and growth uh, pushes me to work harder because I know that I can grow in my career when I know more things. So you can talk about learning and growth and creating a, a brand or a reputation and this will be a good answer to uh, what motivates you uh, to work.
All right, guys, so question number five, and the question goes, give me an example of a time when you faced a conflict while working on a team. And so the interviewer, by this, asking you this question, is gauging your social skills and also your maturity or wisdom. And so basically, because this is a frequently asked questions in interviews in general, you should be coming with the example of this, uh, the answer of this question before the interview. So you need to come up with the example, play it in your head, and even say it out loud, practice it, because this is a very frequently asked questions in interviews in general, not only finance, but in general, this is a frequently asked question. So come up with the answer before the interview for this question. So let me give you an example from my own career of an answer that I would give to this kind of question. And hopefully this answer will be an inspiration for you to think of a conflict or things that happen in your own career. Uh, early on in my career, I worked as a manager of a team of three people. And one of them had uh, little to no confidence in me or my ability to lead the team. So she was highly defiant. Uh, she, would, uh, she wouldn't do the things that I would ask her to do. Uh, and basically just didn't want to work with me at all. So instead of escalating, because I could have escalated the question to HR and make it a big deal, uh, I took a different route, which is I work with her in doing her own work. So basically I would come to work, I would sit with her and take whatever she's doing that day and do her work for her. Because for me, that was part of, of it learning what she was doing. So it's kind of hitting two birds with one stone. I was learning what she was doing so that I can be a more effective manager. But at the same time, I showed her that I'm humble, that I'm willing to, to actually work for her. And so basically at the end, that worked out. So she then realized that, it's some, that I'm someone she can trust. Um, and ultimately, we worked really well together. So the, this is a good example that you can give, that I can give in my situation. And so by giving you this story, I want to inspire you to think of a conflict of a thing that happened in your past that you can bring here and show in a positive light, show a good outcome of it and show what you've done to get there and um, rise above the conflict. And that's basically question number five. All right, guys, that's it for this video. If you liked it and you learned something new from it, please smash that like button. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe down below and let me know in the comment section below what do you think of the content of this video and if there's any other content you wanna see in the future. I'd love to hear from you and I'll see you in the next video.